Alright, hi everyone. Thanks for clicking on the video. Cheeky little intro. Uh, this is going to be on survival games, crafting, with, uh, with crafting aspects. Not necessarily zombies, and on Xbox One X. Well, Xbox One in general, but I've got the X, so I'll just say X. Uh, so yeah, it's five games. Let's get into it. Alright, so the first game in the list... This isn't in any order, by the way. It's not like the first is the best one, fifth is the worst one, whatever. It's just a generic order. Uh, first one being Minecraft, because you can't have a crafting games list thing without Minecraft on it. Because everyone loves it. Well, most people love it, including me. <laughs> uh, there are some downs to it, uh, in the Xbox version, specifically. Um, the Bedrock Edition, not a big fan of that, but not going to get into that here. Have a separate video for all that. <laughs> Uh, overall, the game is good, it's fun, it's a good way to relax, you can chill out with friends or solo, you can build giant cities if you've got the patience for which I don't, or just the challenges set by the Minecraft community, I guess, like the island survival or uh, sky factory, that sort of thing. So fun, it's great. Uh, it's been out for, well, just over 10 years, I think, about 2009. Uh, the first version, Minecraft Alpha, being on a uh, website, so it was free to play, I'm pretty sure. Um, didn't really have many features in it, it was just like creative mode effectively uh, and it had pigs in it as well if I remember right. So yeah, it's been around for a while <laughs> and it's gone through a lot of changes, all, almost all for the better. So good dev team, good on you Mojang. Uh, <laughs> it's playable on pretty much every single platform available from your phone to high-end PC rigs. Um, and on that note, I would actually love to get like a PC set up where it has maybe say one or two uh, 2080s for the cards, 32 gigs of RAM, an overclocked processor, just for the simple reason so that someone says like, hey what'd you use the PC for? It's a beast. I can just turn around and be like, Minecraft! <laughs> because it's funny, get it? Haha, <laughs> good joke me. Anyway, moving on. Uh, <laughs> uh, in case in some how you're not aware of what the game is, uh, you, phone. you mine stuff to craft with and you craft stuff to mine with. Uh, you can make a house it's pretty fun. You can make homes. I mean, same, pretty, pretty much the same thing. Uh, you can make little underground bases, big tree houses, uh, camps with your friends, and or you can just play through the game in the way it's meant to be done and fight the Ender Dragon. And then the Wither, which are two bosses in the game. Uh, you can go to the Nether. That's always fun. You can find a fortress and take all the Blaze's rods for the achievement. So yeah. <laughs> It's pretty fun, right? Yeah, you can also get pet dogs, which is like one of the best parts of the game. Uh, so yeah, get the game if you don't have it already, it's fun. <laughs> uh, I'm really, well like I said, only putting it on this list because it's Minecraft and you can't not have it in one of these lists. Um, if it wasn't Minecraft that was on here, I'd probably put on Subnautica, but I didn't because I like Minecraft, so yeah. Um, <laughs> the Java version, obviously on the PC, has a bunch of mods, Xbox doesn't, unfortunately. Uh, but I, I, my favourite version is the Xbox One edition, so uh, Java edition's a close second, so it's all good. Um, yeah, that's it for Minecraft. On to the next game then. Alright, and the second game in this list here is uh, Seven Days to Die. Uh, it's one of those games where on console it has a lot of potential, but it's kind of snuffed out by an inactive dev team. Well, on console, anyway. On PC it gets regular updates, and it's bloody good on PC, but on console it's just average. <laughs> um, the graphics are kind of, they're not bad, but they're not great. The, it just kind of looks a little bit old, but it's not. Um, the dev team for the console version, fun, uh, not who was it, the, the dudes that made uh, Walking Dead, those games, uh, I don't remember, but they shut down. And I think that might have hurt the game on Xbox, and probably PS4 as well. So, rip that game. Uh, as a game, I mean it's fun, don't get me wrong, it's an enjoyable game. And it released a few years ago, it was like 2016, it released on Xbox. Um, it does take a while to get to get good at. Uh, there's, there's, even if you know what you're doing, it's still a bitch at times. Uh, the crafting's more complex than Minecraft, and by craft I mean just the bases and structures and stuff like that. Uh, gravity does affect structure, structures, 
and you need supports for the house and if you don't have supports then it'll just all fall on you. Uh, that's pretty much what I mean by that. <laughs> the crafting, although it's, it's pretty simple, it's fun, not hard to learn uh, and coupled with the leveling features of the game, it's pretty pretty, pretty rewarding to do it to be honest. Uh, it's quite quite an easy way to level up is just to craft a bunch of menial things like arrows or something like that. You can level up pretty quickly with it. Um, speaking of leveling up, you can also use attribute points, like skill points and that, to level up your character's uh, wellness, which is just like your max health and stamina. Um, crafting speed, you can level that up. Uh, durability and weapon damage, um, you can sort of level that up, but it's like, the more you craft something, uh, the more, the higher your level, the higher your efficiency is in it. So then the weapon or the item that you're using will have a higher rating, and it does more damage and takes more... Uh, and it has more durability, so yeah, it's pretty fun. Uh, the stamina, I mean not the stamina, <laughs> the skill points also can be put into actual perks, like uh, there's a sexual Tyrannosaurus perk, <laughs> which I think just increases your stamina to quite a significant amount. Um, you can upgrade, you can buy like, I think you can also buy, not buy, but like upgrade um, like uh, workbenches and stuff like that, I'm pretty sure, I haven't played it in a while, but I'm pretty sure you can do that sort of stuff and with the upgrade points. Uh, you can get like, you can get traders in it, so you can put skill points into uh, getting cheaper prices on your trading, uh, which is pretty fun. I don't really often trade in the game, but it's good if you wanna, so you got it there if you want to. Um, it does have sort of a, an RPG aspect to it. Um, like I said about the crafting of the, uh, crafting of the arrows to level up your character. Uh, and then when you get like, an iron reinforced club and then you can just like one shot zombies with it it's extremely satisfying so I'd 100% advise doing that you can get like your uh, shooting skills leveled up so you do more damage with the firearms and the bows and the crossbows that's fun making like a rifle and just doming a zombie from like 70 meters away that's pretty fun <laughs> uh, it also has the when you crouch down in the game it's like Skyrim style where it has like the eye if you're being watched and if you're in view of a zombie, uh, so I like I crouch down a lot when I'm like mining, so it, I know if I'm being watched or snuck up on some of that. Um, if you have meat on you, like if you kill a pig, you have some meat on you. Uh, zombies can smell it from a distance away, uh, so you gotta watch out for that. Um, also, in the seventh night, seventh day, seventh night, seventh night, uh, a horde attacks you, and you in your base, and the zombies can't break through your walls and stuff like that so reinforce them <laughs> with like metal and stuff like that is uh, it's pretty severe uh, as the game goes on it gets a lot harder um, after each horde there's also traps you can craft craft uh, you can get like spikes and uh, landmines stuff like that you can place down they can they can like cripple the zombies which is pretty funny so like not a landmine a landmine will just outright kill it but uh, like a spike trap I can like break its legs and it would just start crawling around after you. So that's fun to do. <laughs> um, as for the gameplay itself, there are some alterations you can do to it. So you can change like the difficulty obviously, but you can also change specific aspects of the difficulty. difficulty. So you can make it so that the zombies are always feral, so like 28 days later, or they never run, so they're like Shaun of the Dead, uh, which is pretty, I, I usually keep it on that because the I tried it once where I put it on the hardest difficulty, put it on zombies are always feral and the spawn rate up to the max. I survived for like a minute and a half before I was just overrun and destroyed. Uh, it's pretty, it's pretty, um, not, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? It's pretty brutal on that difficulty. So if you want a challenge, then you got that. <laughs> Overall, the game has a lot of depth, depth, depth. There's a lot of shit to do in it. You've got multiplayer, so you can play with your friends. You get single player, so you can just play offline on your own little world. It's got achievements, uh, an active dev team on a PC. Uh, I'm assuming they'll probably update it on console at some point, but I think it's been like, God, maybe like a year, two years since it was updated <laughs> on console. Um, it is pretty fun. The gameplay itself, like for the walking around, the moving, the aiming, uh, even the zombies' movements, like the animation, it's kind of clunky. Uh, it's really it could be refined quite a significant amount. Um, it's kind of like the, direct, the director's cut for Resident Evil 1, but it's not as bad. And it's also not 
uh, third person. <laughs> it's first person. Um, so yeah, don't rely on Barry saving you in this game. Yeah, <laughs> good joke. Anyway, <laughs> on to the next game. And for game number three in that language, <laughs> Trez, I think, I don't know. Uh, Stranded Deep. We've got Stranded Deep here. Uh, it's relatively new to Xbox, came out a while ago on PC. Um, it's getting regular updates on Xbox, so that's pretty good. I had one last week, I think, which was pretty good. Uh, fixed some bugs, added some more features to it, that sort of thing. So, um, great game if you want to face your fears and your fear thalassophobia, like me. Uh, game starts out with you flying a plane over the Pacific Ocean, um, and then for some reason the plane en ends up crashing into the sea. Uh, at that point, you take control of your character, you swim out the plane, you look down, and it's just darkness in the sea. You don't, you can't see a thing. It's freaky. Uh, you've got a dinghy, you go into the dinghy, cutscene, you wake up on an island. Well, on a dinghy next to an island. Um, the crafting is uh, probably... It's not complex, it's just the, it differs the most from the other games that are on this list, than any other game that's on this list. Um, you, you still have a crafting menu and stuff like that, but it's and it's the depth of the craft, crafting. You'll need to like get some rocks, break them together. On PC, I think it's more complex. But on Xbox, you get you get some rocks. You craft some like little stabby things, like sharper rocks. Uh, you can cut down like uh, bushes to get fiber and stuff like that. You can make tool belts. You can make, you can get coconuts. You can drink the coconuts. But if you drink too many, you get sick. Uh, with the coconut husks, you can make like a, a canteen sort of thing, which is pretty fun. Um, it's a pretty brutal game if you don't get the crafting down, or you don't get the the actual gameplay down, because like you need to like you need to proper farm in it, properly farm in it. I don't think you'd last long if you only went to hunt. I guess you probably could because you get fish, but it's still a bit of a bitch if you were just doing that. <laughs> um, the survival aspects are pretty brutal, like I mentioned, dying from sickness, uh, from eating uncooked food. You can absolutely do that, I've done that before, like an idiot. Uh, you can die of thirst, obviously. Um, this thirst goes down pretty quickly. You can also get aloe vera, or aloe plants, and use them on yourself, so you get more uh, defense from the sun's rays, which is actually pretty an interesting uh, feature to the game. I like that. Um, I haven't really played it that much, so for your sake, if you actually know what the game's like, I'm not going to piss you off by saying everything that's wrong about it or like trying to explain it and being completely wrong because I don't know much about it. So uh, I'll, I'll read this. Uh, Stranded Deep pl takes place in the Pacific Ocean where a plane crash survivor finds himself faced with one of the most life-threatening scenarios in a procedurally generated world. Players can explore Pacific islands, reefs and bottomless oceans, fuck that, uh, tre trenches filled with detailed biomes and need to search for and develop the means to survive. You can make like boats with like engines and stuff like that, it's pretty fun. Uh, the game features a dynamic weather and day night cycle. Uh, also featured as building system, obviously, whereby players are able to sit on an island, construct a shelter, a raft, to explore the ocean uh, and the crafting system, like I mentioned. Uh, resources can be harvested, combined together, create equipment, you can get like torches and shipwrecks and uh, I think if you go deep enough down, there's also stuff down there, but there's also sharks down there, so I'm good. <laughs> I'll just stay on the surface. <laughs> um, resources are limited. The map, although it says procedurally generated, I'm pretty sure it's not. It's not an infinite map. It's it's a limited map. So, like tarp, for example, it's a high spawn rate, but there are a limited number. There is a limited number of it. So uh, yeah, don't use it all in one place, I guess. <laughs> Um, you can manage your vitals of like health, hunger, thirst, and sleep uh, by like checking your watch. For some reason, your watch tells you how hungry you are. Don't ask; it's a game. <laughs> uh, you can search sunken, sunken shipwrecks, like I mentioned. Uh, you can get rare equipment from them. Probably something to do with the crafting of a boat, that sort of thing. Um, basically, the the gist of the game is: uh, eat so you don't starve to death, drink so you don't thirst to death. That's not a word term but whatever. Uh, arm yourself so you don't get cucked by a sharky boy and uh, build a house thing so you don't burn to death in the sun. It's great, it's fun. It's all fun and games until the goblin shark attacks you. Uh, there's also a permadeath mode so if you don't know what that is, if you die you're done. You have to start a new save. <laughs> uh, 
Um, I will say the last time I played it, like yesterday, a few days ago, I, I was doing fine in it. I was getting my stuff, I was eating, I was drinking, it was all good. Um, I was paddling out, I was waiting some water getting collected. And I was like, I'm going to go out and see if there's any like shipwrecks I can like, raid while I'm waiting this water getting collected. Uh, went out into the sea and I jumped in, looked down, it was just darkness and I was like, nah, I'm good. So I jumped back up onto the dinghy uh, slash raft. Um, I looked in the water and there was a shadow of a shark that went underneath the dinghy. And I was like, oh, that's not good. I'm glad I got out of the water. And then it bumped my dinghy. It was a goblin shark, I'm pretty sure, so that doesn't even make sense. But then it like knocked my dinghy. And it flipped it upside down, knocked me into the water, and all I could see was just darkness and nothing, and I dashboarded. I was having none of that. Didn't even save it. Uh, I was done. <laughs> I have thalassophobia, so, yeah. Screw that. I'm good. Uh, but yeah, on to the next game. <laughs> Alright, on to the fourth game now. A game you'd probably expect to be on this list. It's uh, Terraria. No, I'm just kidding. It's Ark, Survival Evolved. It's a prehistoric survival game uh, where you can tame dinosaurs, you can fight dinosaurs, you can be killed by dinosaurs, you can go and scavenge supplies, you can make a house, you can get some pet dodos uh, because they're, they're still alive in this world so it's all good. Uh, good on the dodos. Uh, <laughs> the crafting, uh, pretty standard as normal like every other game in this list. Chop down trees, mine some stone, grab fibre, harvest some berries, you're good to go. Um, there are, one of the main issues with this game is it takes a lot of materials to build things, like actual structures. So, uh, with the, like the sort of like, uh, game altering options you have, I do usually put the harvest amount up, because it's kind of ridiculous having to go back and forward like 50 times to make a 4x4 room. <laughs> um, the dinosaurs in it, some are real, some are not so real, uh, like dodo rex and mechanical tech creatures. Uh, which you can also tame and ride into sunset on a luscious island setting towards your gigantic stone and or metal base guarded by giganotosauruses, T-Rex, raptors, prehistoric crocodilians like Sarcosuchus and also the auto turrets that you can make later on in the game. So if you're on a PvP server and any other pesky PvPers uh, decide to try and raid your base when you're not logged in, uh, then your dinosaurs will make quick work of them. It's great. It's fun. Uh, <laughs> there is also a single player. Um, which I usually play, so that's fun also. Uh, there's an active dev team working in the game. Uh, they usually add like DLC, so like I don't know skins and uh, limited time events. Uh, they'll add in new creatures sometimes, that sort of thing. It's pretty fun. They'll update the graphics. They'll fix some bugs with it. It's a basic dev team that do a pretty good job at maintaining the game on the console as well as PC. So good on them, right? Uh, the old title screen had the best music ever. Uh, they don't have it anymore, but it was great. <laughs> um, like I said, it's got multiplayer, so you can actually team up with your friends, you can make uh, tribes, um, meet new people on online servers, because uh, that's obviously basic servers that you can just jump into. Um, I don't really do that much, I don't like playing online, I just do solo sessions, because I, I like playing alone. <laughs> uh, it has achievements in it, it also has creative mode, which doesn't negate achievements, which is a pretty cheesy thing to do, but hey look, gamer score is gamer score, you know. Um, there's badass futuristic tech weapons like I mentioned, uh, so you can get like lasers and like rail cannons, that sort of thing. Um, you can show Nemesis who's boss in another game. <laughs> uh, these sort of things like the, the RPG leveling up aspects add a lot of playability to the game. You can level up your character and you can also level up your tame dinosaurs, uh, where you can choose to attribute, attribute skill points to the dinosaur and your own characters like damage that they can deal to other creatures. You can upgrade your health, stamina, carry weight, and you used to be able to do the speed. Uh, for, I think, they've taken the speed upgrade away from Pteranodons because people, like me included, uh, the first thing you really want to tame is a Pteranodon, so then you can just fly around the map. But back in the day when you could upgrade the speed of it, you can go from like the southwest corner to the northeast corner in like four seconds, <laughs> which is pretty great. Uh, but they, they took that feature out because it was OP. And on PvP servers, uh, you'd have... You spawn in with nothing, so people that are already in the game that have everything would just uh, spawn kill you, spawn camp you. They would just troll you. And uh, yeah, that's why I don't play PvP as well. <laughs> um, your dinos carry, can carry equipment for you too. 
So like, if you're up at the north on the main island map, like the island, the map called the island, uh, there's metal up there. So if your inventory's full, you get like a pterodactyl with your I don't know, T-Rex or whatever. You can just chuck a bunch of metal into their inventory. Good voice crack. Uh, so you can just take as much as you need. Well, almost as much. Um, the game like altering options that I mentioned earlier, uh, similar to Conan, which we'll get to in a second, uh, where you can actually change like the the harvest amount. You can change your like per uh, skill point you put into a section. Um, you can change the multiplication that that increases by. So, like, you level up once, usually it would go up by, like, I don't know, 7, or, like, maybe, like, 10, 15, like, kilograms or whatever it is. Uh, but if you, like, what I usually do, because carry weight is ridiculous, um, I usually just bump up the carry weight. So, if I level up the carry weight once, for me, it'll put my carry weight up to, like, a near infinite amount. <laughs> because I'm not about walking back and forward 20 times to build a tiny little structure, you know? It's not fun. Um, yeah. <laughs> The creative mode, you can just spawn in weapons and stuff like that, that's pretty fun. Uh, if you want to like explore the map. There's bosses in it, uh, which are pretty fun to fight. They're pretty OP at times as well, but they're pretty fun to fight. Um, there's bosses you can spawn, so like not even the, the basic bosses in the game, there's bosses that you actually can spawn in um, with like trophies or something like that. It's been a while since I've done it, but you need to get certain equipment and then you need to make something and then you need to spawn them in at uh, a big uh, shiny thing in the sky. <laughs> it's been a while, alright? <laughs> Chill out. Um, there isn't really so much a, a difficulty level, it's more like the south of the map is pretty safe, the north of the map is pretty dangerous, that sort of thing. Well, of the island anyway, because that's the main map in the game. Um, there's a lot of maps now and it, actually there's a lot of different uh, areas to play in. Because the dev team added like probably five or six new areas to the game, like new maps to the, like whole new maps to the game, which is pretty awesome. Uh, so if you want to get it, now is a good time to get it. It runs well. It's got a lot of stuff to do in it. There's dinosaurs. You can knock them out and then like tame them. <laughs> so that's always fun. Uh, to summarize the game. Oh, also, uh, I increased the the multiplication that. It, like, I, I decrease the time to tame because usually if you use the wrong item it can literally take hours in real time like in real life hours uh, to tame some dinosaurs so I'm not sitting for that long uh, to tame a dodo you know <laughs> uh, anyway to summarize uh, it's an enjoyable solo multiplayer experience easy to learn features crafting and character pro character progression man speaking would be great uh, the dinosaurs are cool the ocean life is lush the jungles are dangerous as fuck <laughs> and if you're not properly prepared, um, that's all dangerous, to be fair. <laughs> Overall, it's a great game, so you should get it. And that ends ARC. On to the next game. Now on to the fifth game and final game of this list. Uh, it's Conan. Conan Exiles. So I haven't actually played it that much, uh, play, haven't played it in a while, I mean. Um, so for that reason I jumped on it earlier for a few hours and it was pretty damn fun. It's enjoyable. Uh, it's smooth, like the combat feels nice, uh, the crafting's not hard, although it's the same issue with Ark is that you need a lot of items, a lot of materials to craft like a basic thing, so it's kind of grindy in that way, but other than that, it's uh, pretty fun. Uh, the map is gigantic, so <laughs> I've only explored a like a percentage of the map, a fraction of it. Um, so there's a lot more stuff that I've not seen that I can't comment on. So uh, yeah, that's enough reason to get it right there. Is that there's a lot of lot of stuff to do in it. So yeah, <laughs> uh, it's set in the same universe as Schwarzenegger's movie uh, with like beasts, gods, goddesses, other humans to raid. There's like weird little, I don't know, some bipedal creature thing that you can attack and kill. And there's like gigantic tur uh, turtle, uh, turtle, toys things as well. They're pretty passive though, they're alright, so you don't need to fight them. You can kill them and eat them, but you don't need to. I feel bad. <laughs> uh, when you start the game off, uh, you'll be, I think you're on like a crucifixion cross, um, and you're freed by someone, by something. Uh, there's like pretty in-depth character creation, like you can do the, the eye width and height and colour, you can do the hair, uh, the race, the 
like the religious background, you can do uh, uh, sexual size, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Uh, they've got, what else do you have? Uh, yeah, that's it. You get like color for everything, uh, size of everything, type of everything, and that's like the character creation there. <laughs> um, once you make the character, uh, you just jump, like you just run on the way down to the nearest river area, which is like the starting area. Uh, you, there's like a sort of like story mode, uh, story mode, story that you can follow along. Uh, but the story itself is actually like a tutorial sort of. Uh, that will be like your your like one of your missions will be to drink something, uh, to eat something, to kick, punch, heavy attack, climb, uh, run, jump, that sort of thing. I think I said jump twice there, but you get the point. Uh, <laughs> And then, like, from there it progresses on to, like, make a pedestal, make a base, uh, craft, like, a stone sword or something. Uh, and I can only imagine it goes on even more complex than that because there's also spawnable bosses. Um, there's, like, naturally occurring bosses. There's, like, pretty mean-ass enemies. Uh, like, there's giant, like, sarcosuchus-like creatures as well, which is pretty fun. Um, there's swimming in it. Uh, the combat's pretty fun. You can, like, get a shield block and attack and stuff like that. You can lock on Dark Souls style. Um, and if you see like a base, not base, but like campfire with other guys around it, other humans around it, you can go and knock them out and then drag them uh, and, and enslave them. So that's always fun. Sort of. <laughs> um, it's quite, it feels quite a bit like Ark uh, with the, the the surrounding area, like the way it's designed. Uh, but it is third person and there's no dinosaurs per se. So apart from like the characters, it's kind of like Ark Survival Evolved. Um, when I played it earlier, I was playing it on normal. Uh, there's like easy, normal, and hard difficulties. Uh, I was on normal. Um, there's also a custom difficulty, like I mentioned earlier, an Ark, where you have like you can like customize the amount of stuff you pick up when you harvest, the uh, like damage. You can turn on God Mode, Invisibility, Cloaks. Um, you have like an admin console as well. There's uh, achievements in the game, 25. So they are the same as art, they're pretty easy to get. Uh, no, as far as I know, there's no collectible achievements in it, because I've got them all, but it was like two years ago that I got them, so I don't really remember. <laughs> um, you can, like I said, you can like go and like, slaughter other settlements and take their stuff, which is pretty fun. Um, you can get better equipment, you can actually trade, I think, maybe, possibly, that you can trade in like, little towns, like little township places. Um, there's, there's also a nudity <laughs> option in it, uh, so that's always fun. <laughs> Why I play as a female because I don't want to see a dick swinging around the screen. Uh, <laughs> uh, the dev team is pretty active. Uh, there's regular updates to the game, DLC content like weapon skins. Uh, there are a few issues with the game, like the load time. When I was coming onto it for the new save, uh, it took like four, maybe like four or five minutes to load up the new, like the new save game. Uh, which is kind of understandable, the map's gigantic, it's got a lot of stuff on it, but it's an Xbox One X, so, I don't know. <laughs> um, the other issue being the harvesting amount is uh, kind of low, so you got a lot of running back and forward to do to make like a little base. Like, I made like a 4x4 four four base, and or 2x2 two two base I mean, and uh, it took a lot of materials to do that, <laughs> so yeah, that's kind of grindy as well as art. Um, what else we got? <laughs> There's uh, a lot of stuff in the game to do, like missions, exploratory things. There's, I think there's some places that you can like, ex like caves that you can like uh, go on an expedition through, like get artifacts and stuff like that. There's a, uh, I think your whatever religion you choose, the god, but well, most of them, all but one, can grant you like bonuses. I'm pretty sure. Um, there's an upgrade system in it, so you like can level your character up. You can. Uh, put attribute points into like stamina, strength, uh, I think building speed and stuff like that as well. Um, so it's pretty fun. It's pretty standard. Uh, you can get ropes. So you can, like I said, you can tie things up for, for if you want to do that. <laughs> I don't know why you would, but hey, you do you, man. <laughs> uh, let's see, so yeah. Uh, I didn't really play it that much. Uh, I will be playing it again though, like soon, because it's fun. But I want to play Black Ops 4. But anyway, uh, <laughs> so I didn't explore much of the map, just a fraction of it. Map's giant, ton of stuff that I'm missing probably, so I'll, I'll need to click plane, which isn't a bad idea. Um, and then, like I said, it runs smoothly on the X, and it looks pretty good too. Like uh, it looks better than Seven Days to Die. Doesn't look as good as Ark though. So between those two <laughs> games, um, 
So if you care about that, then yeah. It's on Steam as well. Probably better on PC, I would say. Uh, the controls are really easily, um, like, they're easy, really easy to get used to. I mean, the controls are pretty simple. It's like uh, LB is your your weapons wheel, or like, you know, just your equipment wheel. Uh, so if you put, like, food in it, you can just eat food quickly and easily. You don't have to go into the inventory for it. You can equip, like, an axe or a pickaxe or a sword. Uh, you can level up what kind of weapons you can get, or equipment anyway. Uh, so you can unlock, like, a two-handed sword and... There was other DLC stuff as well that looked pretty cool. There was like a futuristic like metallics like laser blade or something something like that. It was pretty cool looking. So there's a lot of stuff to do in it and the game has a lot to offer. So I think it's relatively cheap as well. I think it's like 30 quid or something. Uh, so it's not like the ridiculous 60 like pound price tag that games have these days. Uh, overall I would say 100%. Give it a try. I think it is a trial on Xbox so yeah, chuck it on. For a bit, if you don't like it, no harm done. If you do, pfft, do a game for you. <laughs> uh, either way, that's Conan Exiles. I think I mentioned it. Yeah, it did. It takes place in Schwarzenegger's um, universe. So yeah, he's not in the game though, as far as I know. All right, and that will uh, mark the end of this video. So uh, if you're on this video and you made it all the way through, or if it helped you in any way, then cool. Thanks for watching the video. Thanks for clicking on it. If you want, you can subscribe to the channel. I do. I do this every now and again, not often, but I like doing stuff like this. I like scripted content, it's pretty fun. Uh, I usually do like Call of Duty videos, Resident Evil, to have a Dead Rising playthrough and all but the fourth game, uh, and Case West <laughs> as well, I've done all that. Um, Minecraft, that sort of thing. Pixar, which is like ARC for kids. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if you like what you see, then subscribe and, you know, keep watching stuff. I'm a linguistical expert, alright? <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, see you next video. Goodbye! <laughs>